Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the Good Samaritan, found in the Gospel of Luke. Let's take a look. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among robbers, who also stripped him, and having wounded him went away, leaving him half dead. Luke 10.30 The setup of this story doesn't take long to explain, particularly since it's something that could have happened countless times to countless different people over the years. But although we're not given the names of any of the participants, that doesn't mean we can't learn anything about them. For instance, we know that the wounded man was trying to get to Jericho from Jerusalem. It's likely, therefore, that he lived in Jerusalem and was therefore either a Jew himself or someone originally from another land who'd adopted the Jewish faith. In either case, he was probably familiar with Jewish customs and used to worshipping at the temple in Jerusalem. This may not seem like important information just yet, but keep it in mind for later. And it chanced that a certain priest went down the same way, and seeing him, passed by. Luke 10.31 A priest in the Jerusalem area would have been a member of the Aaronic priesthood, or the priesthood of Aaron, brother of Moses. They were, or at least were believed to be descended from Aaron himself, so there wasn't really any way to become a priest unless your father was one, meaning, of course, that there was no priestly celibacy in the Aaronic priesthood. The priests were generally people of incredible wealth and importance, and held positions of both religious and worldly authority in Jerusalem. If anyone had what he needed to help this injured man, it would have been a priest. However, the priest doesn't stop to offer help, and this is significant, because there weren't really any paramedics back then to help you if you got injured in the desert. If people saw that you were in need and they didn't offer to help you, you usually died in a very short time. In like manner also a Levite, when he was near the place and saw him, passed by. Luke 10:32. A Levite was a member of the tribe of Levi, one of the twelve tribes of Israel, and the one chosen by God to serve special religious duties in the early books of the Bible. While some Levites were priests too, this one wasn't, and a lot of them weren't. Typically, Levites sang, played music in the temple, acted as guards, and carried various things associated with worship in those times in Jerusalem. However, because of the religious role they served, the other people of Israel were expected to support them with tithes, a certain portion of their income. So Levites were, in general, not poor people. However, like the priest, the Levite also has the means to help this man and chooses not to do so. We're not told the reasons why the priest and Levite don't stop to help him, or even check up on him. Maybe they considered themselves too important or special to be bothered. Maybe they were in a hurry to get somewhere and didn't consider this man's life valuable enough to be worth interrupting their schedule. Maybe they were just afraid that whoever had attacked him might still be in the area and left in the attempt to save their own skins. Or they might have thought that he was a dangerous lunatic himself. Whatever the reason, he was clearly in need, and they chose not to get involved. But a certain Samaritan, being on his journey, came near him, and seeing him, was moved with compassion. Luke 10.33 Samaritans were, and still are, a group of people believed to be of Israelite descent. They were different from the Jews in a few ways, mostly having to do with certain religious practices, and because of this, there was a lot of arguing and hostility between the Jews and the Samaritans. In the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus talks to a Samaritan woman, and she explains that Jews don't even talk to Samaritans, and that the Jews believe in worshipping in Jerusalem, but the Samaritans think worship should take place on Mount Gerizim. Because of this troubled history between these two peoples, it would have been natural for a Samaritan to feel prejudice against an inhabitant of Jerusalem, even one who was injured. It would have been even more natural for him to simply ignore the wounded Jew, more natural than for the priest or the Levite. However, he's still moved with compassion when he sees the man's injuries. And going up to him, bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and setting him upon his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Luke 10.34. At the time, this would have been considered a fine means of administering first aid. Oil and wine aren't especially cheap, but they work just fine for their purpose here with the wine killing germs and staving off infection, and alcohol to use on the wounds, and the oil would serve like an ointment, soothing his wounds and keeping out further germs as they made the trip back. 
Bandaging his wounds once they'd been treated made, of course, as much sense then as it does now, and St. Luke, who wrote this gospel, would have recognized all of this, since he himself was a medical doctor. Not only does the Samaritan provide him with a proper treatment for his injuries, but he takes the man to an inn and takes care of him there. And the next day he took out two pence and gave to the host and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou shalt spend over and above, I at my return will repay thee. Luke 10, 30-35 Like the others, the Samaritan does have affairs of his own to see to, but he offers money to the innkeeper to use in taking care of the injured man, perhaps getting him a real doctor. The coins that are translated pence here are denarii in the Latin Vulgate, a coin worth enough to buy about 18 cups of normal wine at the time, and each represents about how much money you could expect to make in a typical job in those times over the course of an entire day. In short, it's not a small gift, and would probably be a lot of help to the injured man. Jesus tells this parable for the purpose of instructing people how to behave in a neighborly way, the way we should react when we see others suffering loss and harm and have the means to help them, putting aside old grudges and prejudices and generously using our own property to help others in need. Next, the two debtors. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.